All right, hey, so uh, today I'm joined by my colleague at Max Digital, uh, Brad Lovell. Brad, how's it going? Good, how are you? Good. Hey, so Brad, this summer, I learned a lot about the car business. Um, and I think this, we all have. Yeah, right? We, uh, in this, this series of um, blog posts and videos I've been doing, I've been talking to people from all over the industry, and I wanted to get your take on this topic right here. So... Um, you do exactly what I do with uh, dealers in the mid Atlantic, right? And on the East coast. Actually I have uh, all the Southeast. Oh, the Southeast. With, okay. Along with the mid Atlantic. So it's, it's kind of a, a different territory, but yeah, I, I have a lot of geography to cover. And so like, <clears throat> hasn't really been that hard and no, no disrespect to the, to the dealers out there, but I mean, we're looking at some of the, the most exciting, most profitable time, in the automotive industry. Would you agree? I absolutely 100%. Yeah. And so like the, what I what I what I've noticed is um that you know some dealers are 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 just are really coasting along. And I I, I really want to know like have you seen have you seen anything from any dealers that are taking advantages? I I have the saying, you know, it's it's the best time to, you know, repair the roof when it's sunny outside, right? Absolutely. Um, not when there's not when it's stormy. And I think it's pretty sunny outside. So uh, what have you seen out there in the industry from some of your guys that that are doing things like repairing their roof? Yeah, I, that's a really good way to put it, Tim, because I think what we're, you know, anybody that's been in the auto industry for, you know, more than a couple of years uh, understands that we've seen very bad times with, you know, 08, 09 and 10. And we've seen incredible times before that. And then obviously, as we sit now. But one thing that's been, um, you know, I, I've constantly tried to dig in with my uh, groups to see what they've kept the same. Mm -hmm. And that's that's a different approach, obviously, because when we ask the question, hey, how are things? We get the normal. Oh, they're great. You know, if we had but, more inventory, you know, that. <laughs> that's right. Yeah. But but I was in a meeting not too long ago with um, um, I think they have six stores now and it was something that kind of caught my attention because we were talking about, you know, inventory, obviously we were talking about the wholesale side of things. And one thing that, that grabbed my attention was they do a, I guess you could call it a, a wholesale backlot type mm -hmm. auction within themselves, within their own wholesalers. Right. And the uniqueness to that was the fact that they're still doing it. They're wow. not trying to just, you know, hoard all the inventory that we hear a lot of and we understand they're keeping those avenues open and they're not blocking anybody from making a living themselves, you know, cause we, we all know that wholesalers are, are struggling right now when it comes to just, you know, volume of right. inventory they're able to move. Yeah. So that was something that really caught my attention. And when we dug further into it, that was exactly, you know, what the gentleman said. He's, He's the director uh, for used car buying and selling uh, within all six stores. And he just simply said, I don't want to mess up the circle. He said, we all know if we've been in this business any amount of time, things aren't always going to be this good. So that was something that really caught my attention was the way they've stayed the same when so many other dealerships have changed because times have changed. Yeah, wow, that's an interesting way to look at it. So um, as opposed to, um, you know, maybe making some major changes, it's being consistent and holding yourself to a disciplined inventory turn, disposal of cars that don't meet your needs, as opposed to maybe going outside outside the lines and, and trying and just it's just kind of giving up in, in a sense, but they stay disciplined. Exactly. And that's the best way to put it is, is discipline, you know, is whether you want to use sports analogies that we often do or whether you want to just use, you know, the car business that we're in. That's it. Consistency is going, it has to be there if you want to go forward. Because yeah. like I said, we know this is going to change. And, and these guys, it's paid off for them, I imagine. <laughs> Absolutely. And, and that's, that was the other thing that I asked after he told me that was how are sales and in, in, as far as numbers, you know, he said they've actually except for obviously the inventory shortage, they've actually stayed pretty consistent with, with the times, you know, whether, whether it's way up, you know, or whether it's, it's down a little bit, they've stayed pretty consistent, you know, overall. And that was something that kind of, kind of really caught my attention, but I think it has a lot to do with that consistency you talk about. Cool. Hey, Brad, great take. 
man. I really appreciate you, yeah, you uh, your insights. Thanks for all you do to uh, you know dealers all across the country, oh, Southeast, Mid Atlantic, and East Coast, and out to Wyoming. Yeah, oh, even <laughs> Wyoming. All right, five more to talk about there. You bet. Thanks, Brad. All right, thanks, Tim.